back for another Cowboys and Coffee podcast. We're <laughs> we're doing good now. Hey, D, it's Paul. What's going on? How you doing? Doing fantastic. Got a nap in today from that two or two thirty in the morning. Coming home from last night's game. Yeah, um, lots happened the last couple of weeks since we last had our Cowboys and Coffee podcast. Quick question: Did you get your coffee today from Lisa, who owes you a coffee? No, I'm still waiting on a. We'll we'll get that taken care of. I'm sure. I'm sure we will. All right. Listen. We're, we're in a whole different world, baby, than we were last time we talked. I mean, the last time was doom and gloom. Dak was hurt. Cowboys were out and out. Cooper Rush was coming in the last couple of weeks. He has, oh, my gosh, proven that he's an excellent backup. I think my big takeaway from the last couple of weeks to start is we don't have to worry anymore about who's this backup quarterback next year or the year after that. I mean, it's Cooper Rush. You know, whatever he does, okay. I mean, he's done fine so far, 3-0, and only – uh. Uh, Roger Staubach and Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett have started the same three and and0 Is he going to go somewhere? He's a free agent. You know that, right? Yeah. Who's you going to offer Cooper Rush big money? I think he stays in Dallas to sign the yeah, next. No, somebody. Ooh. Listen, the, the better he looks, the more money he's going to make. I mean, it's going to be hard not to turn down. You know, he goes somewhere else. A cheap contract is ten million a year. Uh, cheap contracts, 20 million a year, right? 20, 20 million, 10 million. It's just like throwing his numbers around. Yeah. From being a backup. And next thing you know, he's a starter and listen, he's got the reputation. We heard it on Sirius radio that he knows the playbook and they say he's going to be a coordinator someday. And usually when they say that, that's usually a good sign, but he's still 28 years old. He got plenty of football back uh, left. Listen, these guys talk about him like he will definitely be an offensive coordinator one day, and that's how smart he is. You know, he knows the playbook, and that's why they kept him versus uh, rather than some of their other options. They kept him. He was the guy who they said he knows the playbook. He knows the playbook. He knows the playbook. That's why he's our guy. A lot of fans were like him and Hahn. I didn't necessarily have a problem with it. I just didn't think he would be playing as well as they have around him. Yeah, he's done a fantastic job. You couldn't ask for anything better in the role. He hasn't lost. Well, he's uh, in his starts in limited time. Um, can we compare him to Jimmy G now and his starts, Jimmy G? Yeah. Listen, let's start a couple weeks ago. They beat the Bengals at home in a big, big win. Micah Parsons terrorized that team. We come to this week, they beat the Giants. They have more pressures than anyone else in a single game this year. The defense has turned it up a notch. Micah Parsons, if you watch him on TV, he's even more impressive in person. His ability last night to be chipped by the tight end, push through Andrew Thomas, bowl through Glowinski, and still hit Daniel Jones right in the teeth. I mean – what more can you say about this guy? And then you see him in person, you're like, he's nuts. He's not, he's not, he's a juggernaut. Well, how do you describe him? He's one of those, um, those, those robots, those robots that they're a car and they turn into that robot. What do you call those? Transformer. Transformer. <laughs> That's what he is. He's a transformer. Um, he's a running back in a linebacker position. He just hits the hole. He's going to, he's going to fill that hole. And he goes with power and speed. I know somebody else like that too, your son. But anyways, um, so listen, we saw it live and he was sick. He was under the weather and still control, took his defense and said, I'll still do, do enough out here that rest of you guys can just pick up, pick up. And by the way, it's make Lawrence, the Marcus Lawrence, a better player. Yeah, I, I, Micah Parsons is the leader that the Cowboys have needed for years. Someone who's saying, you know what, we're not going to lose anymore, or I'm sick of losing. You know, like we've complained for years. There's aren't guys who hate losing. Micah Parsons showed me a lot when he said, listen, my quarterback got hurt. It's not my time to be going on these talk shows. we got to buckle down and take care of business. And that's what they've done. The Cowboys haven't let up a 200-yard passer this year. They've faced Tom Brady and Joe Burrow and Daniel Jones, but even – they didn't get 200 yards at home. Right. 
they haven't they haven't passed these teams have not passed well or run well. The Cowboys have shown their defense. Demarcus Lloyd's three sacks yesterday. Durant Armstrong had another sack. These guys are really you can see them improving. Uh, they're look Quinn Quinn is happy, okay, because he's got some rooks. He got some bishops to play that defense. And let me say hats off to the gentleman that I thought. Hill, Mr. Hill, I thought that we'd be out of there. Uh, he's starting to get up there and do some things. Uh, I was shocked that he – a lot of people were surprised he made the roster. I was shocked that he got, like, a lot of play. He made some big plays last night. He was helping Daniel Jones face. He was he was making things difficult for Saquon in the backfield. Like, wow. And, you know, their their draft this year is really starting to look – Tyler Smith has, has been solid – and left tackle. He's been fantastic since he kicked out there. Sam Williams has shown us stuff, and he's been a pet cat of ours since before the draft. He had three big pressures, and he was really getting after Daniel Jones yesterday. Jalen Tolbert finally got in there, made a catch, right? Jake Ferguson got to play. He made a catch, right? Damone Clark is the guy that we like down the road. This yeah, is where yeah. He's going. Well, I mean, like, these guys, like, they didn't know what they're doing. Uh, Turpin. Tur- Cavante Turpin and, and you have um, Peyton Hendershot. Both those guys are undrafted free agents. This is a decent cl- draft class. At least they're per- they're playing so far. Um, the first two picks for that other team in first place, uh, they, they're still calling themselves the Eagles until further notice. Are they getting any playing time? Those those two players. Jordan Davis has started to get some playing time, but. Uh, they're not really uh, creating the the impact stats that you want to see. We can say yeah. that. We can say that. Uh, where? What were? What was your biggest takeaway from yesterday's game? It'll be. This is coming out um, Wednesday. We're here recording live Tuesday. We're at the game, the Monday night game. What's your What's your biggest takeaway from the Cowboys so far? Well, it's on person and what we've seen over the last three weeks total. So let me let me do a plus minus plus that one minute management. I'm going to say something, you know, right, constructive and, and negative and end with a constructive thing. Look, the offensive line is getting better. OK, the kid Smith is doing a, a good job. He has a hiccup from time to time. He has a hiccup. Not one of those holding calls that we took a touchdown away. He's yeah. had some hiccups, but he he's uh, uh, producing. And the position of that left tackle. Now, the minus side that I still don't like, and I said to you the game sitting there, why are we always beating ourselves? A third of that game, of the games we go into, we beat ourselves, 30%. And when you're beating yourselves, it allows the other team to stay in the game or continue to function. The third down one, we could name them last night. The game should have been over. I understand there's a couple um, calls of the referees that's completely – blown they, they, they i don't know what they had right. what, the, what they, were, they were looking in the stands or something i don't know what the uh, uh on noah brown was r- ridiculous but we're beating ourselves and good teams are smart teams smart teams are good teams Listen, Simple as that. now let me give you the plus of it all the backup quarterback is playing like a starter yeah, I mean, they've done a great job. He, he should have had 260, 270, and another touchdown. Should have. At least, I, at least they, a touchdown. But he put the ball there. That's the point where I'm saying he put the ball there. CD yeah. could have scored. The reality is CD could have scored. And we're also talking about uh, Noah Brown could have scored or at least put the ball at the one-yard line with the call. Yeah. Twice right. there's, there's no calls on Noah Brown when there should have been. And – what else do you want Cooper Rush to do? He put another ball out there in the seam for Jalen Tolbert. That's the hardest throw in, in, in the game was a seam That's route right. right there. Yep. Give him a legitimate shot. So I, I think what I – my takeaway is this. We, meaning the majority of Cowboys fans, I'm going to include myself definitely in this, got too caught up in week one. And week one, crazy stuff happens. Weird things happen. And then you see teams start to settle into who they are. The Cowboys have settled in. They're a very, very, very good defensive team. And they're going to get better because J. Ron Curse is going to come back at safety. And they're going to start to play Jabril Cox more, the linebacker position, and they're going to be able to fly around the field. If they get healthy offensively, 
Dak at quarterback, Michael Gallup at the number two receiver, Dalton Schultz at tight end, and Tyron Smith somewhere on the line, whether that's left tackle or left guard, they have a complete team. They have a phenomenal punter. Brett Maher has been an excellent kicker since he's come back. Kavante Turnpin is, is ex- excellent in the return game, where that's punts or kicks. He can, he can flip the field. We, he, though he has yet to score in the regular season, we think he can do that. They're a complete team. And these other teams, I know Eagles fans are very happy to be 3-0, as they should be. And for some reason, the Giants are still 2-1, and one, and the Commanders are 1-2, and two and they stink. But the Cowboys, if they can come back with Dak and get healthy, you do not want to face them in the second half of the season. You do not want to face these guys in the playoffs because I think they've changed the whole chemistry of the team. And you know what's another big signing? Jason Peters. Jason Peters. Talk to me about Jason Peters and what what he's bringing to this team now. Well, we've known him since day one, since he's came out of the draft. We've always raved about him. The day that the Carolina Panthers got rid of him and said, you're crazy. I don't know. What is this? This is insane. We remember they got when they got, got rid of him for a first round draft pick. Bills, like, the Bills traded Peters. The Bills. I, mean, I think Carolina, I don't know why. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. It was the Bills, really. That's where he came from. Um, Unbelievable. So it seemed like 100 years ago. And it he was. was an undrafted free agent. It was a blocking tight end. Oh, is that what he was? Yep. So it's, it's, it's something that remember I told you we're missing that one guy who won it, that one guy who's been there and won it. The Cowboys had her, her battle. Listen, I said to you before we win a Super Bowl, put his number up there. Cause you know, Jimmy Johnson's not going up there. Put his number up there with his name. That's it. As soon as they lifted a, the trophy up, start Getting the ink ready. You know, he said he wanted to go to a team where he could help young tackles learn the game. Terrence still still relatively young. He's still learning the position a lot. Right. And, you know, Ty Smith, Tyler Smith's learning that left tackle spot literally on the fly. And even so, yesterday, Warniak, Warniak, the left guard. Yeah. He gets a, a bad penalty on the first drive and stalls the drive. They put Peters in best runs of the game for Pollard and Zeker to the left side of the, the field. He knows he has, you, you could see some of the plays, the nuances, how to just nudge or just, just hook just enough to, to seal or open up the hole. That's stuff you cannot, you, you don't know unless someone literally is teaching you step-by-step or showing you that's what these guys are going to improve. We've seen them improve already. The line is really gelled. We didn't hear a peep from Biotis last night. Zach Martin, we never hear from because he's do- he's literally perfect. And Terrence Steele shut down the guys. And yeah, Ty Smith, Kayvon Thibodeau was silent all day. That's what else do you want? They've improved. Well, you know, the media is something. The two and old giants, everybody's huffing and puffing. We're at the stadium. And, you know, they were all pumped up. They get beat. Now they're not, the, their line stinks. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, we, we looked at those wins and said, Hey, those teams, you play the schedule, you know, and there's no, there's no Louisiana techs or Appalachian States on the schedule. They're all professional teams, but, but the, teams were, the, the teams, the teams they played against were not good quarterbacks. Correct. That's a, sorry, that starts everything for your whole well, the team. The Titans What's gave up that week one game to the giants. They really, they collapsed and gave them that game. Giants won. Go, go, go get it. You know, they, that's fine. They did that. Last week, then they beat the Panthers. The Panthers stink. Matt Rule's going to be out of town. Baker Mayfield's going to be fighting for Cooper Rush's job next year if Cooper Rush is uh, right. uh, for taking him free agency. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, uh, they played a good team in the Cowboys. Cowboys are the better team. Cowboys are a better team. Here's why. The Cowboys are missing their quarterback. Missing their number two receiver, missing their tight end, missing their left tackle. Their star defensive player was playing with the flu. They had penalty after penalty, gave them life. They had dropped touchdown passes. The Cowboys had missed calls that could have been for more points. Mm -hmm. And they still beat them by a touchdown. Right. They were one-point underdogs. They won by seven. That's an eight-point swing. Right. That's, That's big. They were not favored to win. 
they won by a touchdown. So I, I'm shocked the Cowboys won these last two games. I'm surprised. But that pass rush has been – they those are dogs. Deron Armstrong is getting after the quarterback. He's every uh, – this is the reality of what uh, – rather than go on and on and on, I had to sum it up like this. Jerry and Will McClay, and Steven and Mike McCarthy were right. They were right. Some of these things worked out. It felt like they had guys to come up, take Dalton Schultz position, take Randy Gregory's spot. What is Deron Armstrong of three, four sacks? Randy Gregory's career high is six. They're paying him a right. lot less. Yep. So they've been right so far, right? They trust in Cooper Rush. They're like, oh, trade for Jimmy G, do this and that. I would rather have Cooper Rush right now than Jimmy G. <laughs> Jimmy G. Listen, so let, let, let's go talk uh, talk about the Eagles and, and Giants and the other teams. <laughs> Here's what's going to happen. Eagles are going to make the playoffs. We're going to make the playoffs, and we're going to play them in, in the championship. Good. I hope so. That's it. Now, now here's the controversy. We got it all, and they're starting to do this stuff. They won't do it. Listen, if the Dallas Cowboys folded this year, ESPN would shut off. It would be like a blank. It wouldn't be nothing. That would, you know, talk, the sports talk world would have nothing to say. to be like, what, what are we going to talk about today? The Dallas Cowboys organization is no longer exist. There's no controversy. There's none. Dak needed to sit down, get that heel, that that ankle healed. Now, supposedly there's swollen in his hand. I don't know what they reported. I don't know what that means. I'm not worried about it. You take him one one game at a time, and that's how you do. The one team that is healthy at the end of the year will win. That's the way it is this season. Right. Uh, the Packers look. I know they beat the Bucks. The Bucks are playing without a. They're the Chargers and Bucks have been just slaughtered by injuries this year, and they've been dinged up and they're in rough shape. So I understand why the Packers beat the Bucks, but the Packers don't look like they're anything uh, great at the moment right now. Aaron Rodgers looks very, very, very human. He uh, looks sluggish. It looks like he he swam all day long and went to play basketball. Sluggish. Right. That's only no zip on his ball. There, 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 he looks old. I've watched football long enough. When you can't complete a, a, a pass to your back out of the backfield and not even close, you're five yards off the field or thrown to the ground. Come on, with no pressure, something's wrong there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm be worried about that. You know, they say he's the bad man and it's time to play, it's time to play. But that when they play some better teams, he, he's looked human. So far this year, and those receivers just haven't been able to step up. I mean, the Rams are the Rams. They're still there. The 49ers haven't looked great with Jimmy G. They put up 10 points. Seahawks are a bust. The Cardinals don't impress me or scare me. The Buccaneers are the team that can beat the Cowboys, but they have to get healthy. And they're an older team, the oldest team in the NFL. In the NFL. So it's not like it can just be like, yeah, they're definitely going to be healthy at the end of the year. Like, we know why they're not – Healthy, it's because they're old. The Saints and the Panthers and the Falcons stink. The Vikings are whatever, hot and cold. They're, they're Kirk Cousins' embodiment. The Lions are tough, but they don't scare me. The Bears don't scare me. The NFC East doesn't scare me. Cowboys can play the Eagles. I think, you know, they can be there. The Cowboys have the roster, if healthy, to be there in the NFC Championship game, to win multiple playoff games. I'm not saying they're going to the Super Bowl, but man, I would not be surprised if they're in an NFC Championship game because they can be. They have the talent to be. Yeah, we're you know, listen, it's a long, long season, and the, and the way the season going, the one who's healthy at the end is is gonna it's gonna succeed. That's that's they'll have the players and starters to play, and and the Giants, the the Commodores, Conquistadors, those organizations are in big trouble. They're in big trouble because the 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 Washington team needs a new coach. Needs oh, a new coach. Ron Rivera, I say, is always the the modern version of Jeff Fisher. And yeah. one year we went to the Super Bowl, they lost, and this man's been riding it for years. Jeff Fisher rode that to another organization. So is Ron Rivera, but they're not good coaches. They're they're not good. No, they don't have good teams. You know no. that, that's what worries me about some of these. 
these these guys do they realize what are the, what are the commanders going to do? They have to restart all over. Another, and remember, another quarterback surge. Yep. Carson Wentz is off again, on again, off again. And the and the Giants kind of make the the decision on Barkley and and Jones. Are you going to and, and by the way, uh, Johnson's going to retire soon, and what you might call Kelsey's out. There's going to be a drop off at that center spot and that right tackle spot. Johnson's not going to play much longer. How right, he's, he's, he's battled injuries and screwed yeah. already. Yeah. So the Giants really are in a tough spot because they declined Barkley's fifth-year option, which it looks like they should have taken at this point because now you're early. They have to figure out what they're going to do with him. And this year, they use him left, right, middle, shit. I mean, they beat the snot out of him. He's their entire offense. It's him right, him left, him center, or Daniel Jones scramble. Now, Barkley's going into that new second contract where running backs tend to fall off, and he's already been injury prone. Now, you're going to pay him that big money, or are you going to let him leave and have nothing in the backfield? Or are you going to draft a running back in the first round again and make the same mistake? It's silly. Daniel Jones has not shown you anything. He is the epitome of a replacement-level quarterback. He stinks. So I, I don't know what you're going to do. I would resign Barkley, but I'm not. I'm not resigning Jones. I'm moving on. Yeah, well, he, well, there's nothing there. He, he's a good athlete, can run. He, he, there's there's a lot of passes there that he 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 misses, and you can't miss on those levels. And, and Daniel Jones isn't a sneaky good athlete. I think that they say, oh, he's white, so he's a sneaky good athlete. No, Daniel Jones is a good athlete. Yes, he is. Matt yes, Jones is. is a sneaky good athlete because he's yes. built like Plato. Yeah, right? he's sneaky good. You know what I mean? That's uh, Tyrod Taylor is a sneaky good athlete, right? They don't yep. look big and strong or quick, but they can they can get out there and move around. Right. You know, Daniel Jones is legit. He's a legit athlete. Yes, and he is. Yeah. For, but for his athleticism, Cowboys had 10 sacks last night. Yep. A, a bunch of those plays, he's bailing so that they can actually, you know, get a playoff or try and make something in a couple of plays that he made. But that's what that's the only thing that saves him. He's not a great passer. And I feel like this offense, the whole Giants team has become very conservative, which helps them beat lesser teams. But he doesn't stretch or push the ball down the field, and they don't have receivers really to do it with anyway. But early in his career, he was a little, he was a little more aggressive, which helped them really push the ball and, and, and get out there offensively to, to try and make something happen. Now he doesn't have that. So he just looks dull. He looks like vanilla ice cream without the vanilla. Right. right? It's like just like right. the milk custards. That's it. Yeah. So I, I can't see where you go, but they're going to have to try and make a trade somewhere or, or draft a quarterback, but you're going to go into, what are you going to go on next year with you? You're going to trade for Mitch Trubisky and try, try him. Like, uh. like where are your options? You don't have a lot of options out there. They're drying up quick. And who, if you're a, if let's say you're a quarterback who all of a sudden wants out, let's say something crazy happens. Aaron Rodgers says, I'm sick of this. These, these bummers yeah. send me somewhere else. You think the giants are going to be on the list with those options? I don't think so. No. An offensive line. Evan Neal got now came on Thibodeau last night. I give him the benefit of the doubt. It's his first game back. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Injury. His arm's still in the brace. It's his first professional game. And he didn't do anything. It was the first game. He didn't even have his legs under him. So I don't no, I, You can't expect. Right. You can't expect two sacks from him last night. But Evan Neal, he comes in at right tackle. So Marcus Lawrence cooked him for three sacks. He was getting beat all night long. And his technique was dreadful. So about you think Aaron Rodgers is going to be pining to come to New York? For what? No. He's not no. coming to New York. Nope. No way. And, and, and Mr. Neal's not getting any better. He's big and he's slow. Big and he's slow. Yep. Well, is he going to lose big. 30 pounds to get in shape, to get in no, no, football no, no. shape? Otherwise. This is, this is the pros now. This is not college. He had the size to move in front of people in college. The right, difference right. is that the Smith is more athletic he can get away with his strength. He's athletic. Right, to get right. Somebody, his hands on him. Um, plus, uh, what you call is not athletic at all. No, no. You don't have to be athletic to be a good lineman, but you have to have some mobility and in, in, in get your body moving around and be in that position. 
Right. Now, next week, the Cowboys are home against Washington. Carson Wentz better pray. And their line isn't even as good as the Giants. He better pray. They're going to have to try and get the ball out of his hand quick. They're going to have to try and get it into McLaren's hands and try and really attack these guys fast. Um, because if, if Wentz goes into deep drops, it's going to be a long day for, for Washington against that defense. Well, because the Cowboys back, back seven is better than Eagles on top of it all. Right. And I think the Cowboys have started to figure it out offensively the last couple of weeks too. You know, they had four straight quarters without a touchdown. And they put a couple of late scores in and they looked good and they looked clean, not to mention CD's play, which if you look at the development of the play, it was beautiful watching it live. You could see it coming from a mile away. we screaming CD, CD. And he, he was wide open. Now, these guys better, they better figure it out. And they better figure it out fast. Well, I want to see Tolbert on a nice little slant pad go 80 yards. I agree with you. Is it asking too much to put Turpin on there on the field? They're going to try and get him. They've been talking. The guys have been saying they're going to try and get him out in the open. They've been using him. I think they're setting it up for someone down the road, like a team in particular, like saving it because uh, – they use it, him out there to block, to block, to block, and then you lull someone to sleep like a Rams game or someone when you need it at Green Bay, mm-hmm. and then something you let loose, and it's an 89-yard touchdown pass. So keep an eye out for that. D, we're going to wrap up here, mostly because yep. the computer is at 1%. Yep. Listen, make sure you get that coffee from Lisa Braz. She owes you. It's oh, oh, yeah, coffee. I'm going to take care of that. Coffee. I have my coffee today, Jack. Yep. I'll take care of that. Listen, I love you. I hope you have a great night. We'll be back. We're two and one. Let's make it three and one after this week, baby. I hear you. I love you. Take care, buddy. Love you too. Cowboys and Coffee Podcast. This is Designated Report Joint. Find us on YouTube. Find us on Instagram. Find us everywhere. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a great night. D, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.